first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. State of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Or System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs> Peace, peace. I'm back once again with Dr. Aileen Bay. All right, we're going to get into the discussion about the Great Schism and the destruction of the Moore Science Temple of America. And the reason why we're going to get more into this information or into this particular paradigm is because um, there's a lot of confusion going on out there. And so um, we want to give our take on it. Um, so let's get into it. Of course, everybody know about um, Prophet Noble Drali um, being born, Timothy Drew. And he was born January the 8th, 1886. But he actually was born near Clinton, or what's called Sampson County in North Carolina. If you read the 101 um, Morris questionnaire, um, question 11, where was Noble Drowley born? His answer is in the state of North Carolina, 1886. Um, there was an article in which that came out in 1993. Actually, it was August 15th, 1993, in which that came from the Charlotte Observer, which is here in North Carolina, in which that dated um, that particular Sunday, in which that um, states that North Carolina in 1690 reported the presence of Moors and that they were, and that they are the ancestors of a people erroneously called Melungeons. Now, um, of course, the word Melungeon, um, Mel, is Greek in which that mel is the same as melanin or melanite, in which that melanated or in which that means um, dark skin, dark complected or black. But as the article says, erroneously called melungeons. All right. But it was the represence of more. So, and this was back in the 1690s. It was, be, it was um, you know, prior to the so-called, um, a lot of the so-called times in which that they speak about, you know, as far as the slavery um, time, even though it was around 1619, allegedly, in which that they brought the first 20 slaves to the um, shores of North America. But amazingly, they don't never equate those particular Africans um with morals. And this is one of the disadvantages 
Um, and actually, one of the problems in which that we're having today, because if you read the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, it specifically states those who was here historically prior to the invasion of their territories by the Europeans, as well as those who was brought here involuntarily to the so-called New World, who freed themselves and wished to be um basically wish to be part of the culture in which that they was torn from. All right. So in both cases, we are still indigenous people. If we came from the continent of Africa, which is about 15%, or if we came about 85% in which that was already here, regardless of that fact, we are still indigenous because we are still the oldest people on the face of the planet. Um, however, it was stated that um, Sarah Turner um, Prophet Noble Dralee's aunt, um, who often, who supposedly often beat him, once threw him in a blazing furnace, yet Allah saved him from the flames. Later on, he ran away from home, and one night while walking on the road, he heard a voice which stated, where thou go if I go. All right. Now, it is also alleged that it was Sarah Turner, who was also part of the Turnica family, Washita Turnica family or Choctaw, who raised Timothy Drew after the deaths of, the, of, of his parents, who is Eliza Turner and John Drew, and taught him his true heritage, history, lineage, and legacy. Now, in 1902, at the age of 16, Timothy um, Drew became a merchant sea mariner, according to reports, and traveled to Egypt, where he was initiated into the Lester Mystery System of the Great Pyramid, and also traveled to Morocco, Hajjad, um, um, Saudi Arabia, as it was called now, and etc., where he studied Islam under some of the top imams of North Africa. Now, of course, this is all alleged. We have no proof of all of this, but this is what has been say, stated um, by many. Now, after Timothy Drew proved his prophethood before the higher fast of Egypt, he made his only pilgrimage to Mecca and received a new name called El Hajj um, Sheikh Abdul. Sharif Ali and a charter was given to him in order to teach Islam in America from the Sultan Abdul Aziz bin Abdullah Rahman um, bin Faisal al Said. Now he was the head at that time of the holy city of Mecca and the direct descendant of um, Hagar of course Hagar is allegorical alright this is what people have to um, realize is that it was it was um allegorical. It's a fictional character. Hagar didn't exist. It's a biblical character. Hagar is actually a story in which that was taken from Het Heru or Hathor uh, from out of ancient Kemet, in which that symbolized the eye of Heru. But um, that's another story. We get into that a little bit later. Um, by 1924, Professor Drew had a dream in which soon after he annexed his name with Ali, all right? He thus becoming Prophet Noble Drew Ali. Now, the Prophet later honored the Sultan by placing his image in the first edition of the Moorish Holy Quran, Circle 7. Now, according to the Moorish Science um, account, at the age of 16, he befriended a band of Roma or gypsies, all right? And, of course, the word gypsy is short for Egyptian with whom he traveled the world, although other accounts states he shipped out um, as a um, merchant seaman or became a railway express um, manner and joined, or some say that he joined the circus and became a stage magician. You all right? Some researchers wonder whether Timothy Drew actually left the States at all. All right? Now, that's because there's no proof of this ever happening. However, um, these are the things in which that has been said concerning him. In 1906, Timothy Drew was a um, train expressman called a Pullman Porter, working for Illinois Central, also known as the Main Line of Mid-American Railroad. He was raised in the Baptist Church and moved to Newark, New Jersey in 1907 and attempted to um, build a militant Christian organization to combat, to combat racism and segregation. This group was known as the Drew Baptist movement, in which this, this information is rarely ever talked about. Drew had to complete with the um, growing influence of the black 
of the major black um, churches, such as African Methodist Episcopal um, Church, you know, and one of the first bishops was Bishop um, Henry McNeil Turner, who was a relative of the Prophet Nobudrali, and um, the Black Baptist Church. Now, Drew soon dis- discarded the notion of founding a um, Christian organization and turned to a new concept of Islam. So between 1908 and 1910, it's alleged that Drew returned from the East to the States and joined the Prince Hall Masons. And it's not the Prince Hall affiliate. It's the Prince Hall origin. This is where many are messing up at saying that he's not a Mason because they have checked the records in the Prince Hall affiliate. Well, we have checked the records in the Prince Hall origin. And it has been um, stated to me by those who are Prince Hall origin that he was a member of the Prince Hall Origin, which is the National Compact. Um, now, if you read Islam in the African American Experience by Richard Brent Turner, he states some of the same information which that we're talking about. Timothy Drew became a noble of the ancient Egyptian Arabic order of mystic shrine. But unlike others, he became attached to the principles and the creed and the religion of the one God principle as taught by Prophet Muhammad. Now, you can read Who is Prophet Noble Drali by um, Chief Minister Dr. Ra Sadiel. And he goes into more information concerning that. By 1912, he united himself with two other individuals, uh, one by the name of Solomon Muhammad and the other represent. Uh, represented the Emir Abdullah Karim El of Morocco. And that was his um, Masonic Shrine of Brothers to form a Masonic temple. Um, you know, you need three individuals. All right. That, I thought that was interesting itself. And of course, what comes from that, they received certain books, lessons, and knowledge to think on greater things. And by 1913, the Canaanite Temple was born from this union on May 1st, 1913. In Newark, New Jersey, or known as Jerusalem. The Canaanite Temple was located in Newark, New Jersey, and the address of the building was 7 on uh, Ruckus Street, corner 12th Avenue, and West Market Street. All right. Now, Prophet um, Drew or Professor Drew, um, later on, by some speculated that there was two different persons. Now, n- let me explain what this was talking about, that Professor Drew's leadership began to be challenged by this guy by the name of Walid um, Abdullah Farad Muhammad Ali. Now, some used um, that his name actually was David Ford L. Um, later on, but some speculate that there was two different persons. And in 1916, while teaching Arabic classes at the Canaanite Temple in New, New Jersey, him and Professor Drew got into a dispute where he claimed that Professor Drew was teaching a version of Islam that was watered down. Um, his account, according to um, Brother Claudius M. L. in his book, The Biography of the Moors, he writes, later um, as time went on, the prophet's accomplishments was temporarily stopped. He received his first of many troubles to be faced. A newcomer came into the picture. He was an Arab named Farad Muhammad, a Syrian Egyptian, a Syrian Egyptian, man named Walid Abdullah Farad Muhammad Ali from a Muslim Middle Eastern country of Arabia who came to Newark teaching Arabic. Being that the Muslim religion and the national side was new to the followers of Noble Drali, the Arabian became more interesting, you know, to most of the people. The prophet never taught a foreign language to his followers. He taught the people in the language they knew all their lives, English, a language that has been de- uh, with people who said slavery times 134 years ago or so Of course it wasn't that long Ago during that particular time um, The prophet speaks to some of the followers Elaborating on the events that had taken place He told the gathering how the foreigner Had come in and scattered his children His followers And the prophet predicted that something would take over The Arabian for what he had done Now this split caused one Fraction to stay in New, New Jersey and Professor Drew named it the Holy Moabite Temple of Science of the World, in which that is also known as the Morris Holy Temple of Science of the World. And while Professor Drew and his uh, faction moved from New Jersey to 
Chicago, Illinois, the same year, on May 1st, 1916, he founded the Moorish National Divine Movement of North America. You can read this in the Encyclopedia of African and African American Religions by Stephen um, D. Um, Glazier. It says, during the same year, 1916, the so-called Jewish people established the Zionist movement. No coincidence, because um, three years earlier, um, 1913, with him forming the Canaanite Temple, less than a year later, the so-called Vatican um, incorporated and do the exact same thing, the Prophet Nobu All right, And this is what formed the so-called Papal State, um, which is the actual state inside of a country um, known as Italy um, within the confines of a um, territory called Rome. Now, the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World became uh, incorporated under the name Moorish Temple of Science, also known as the Temple of Islam, which has been set aside in 1925 as a civic organization under the laws of the state of Illinois, November the 29th, 1926. Now, too many are caught up in the illusion, uh, and they cannot see what the prophet really did. Now, before I get to what the prophet did, let's get into um, the reason why um, the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the world could not be used in a civic, um, as a civic organization. So they had to change it to the Moorish Temple of Science, and they couldn't say the Moorish Holy Temple of Science because the word holy implies a religion. So as a civic organization, it was recommended not to put the word holy in there and just make it into the Moorish Temple of Science. Okay? Now, by November 29, 1926, was the actual day of the Articles of Incorporation filed by the Prophet along with others for the upliftment of fallen humanity. <clears throat> and it was accepted, and the charter was issued, not, um, not the day it was filed. Remember, the Prophet said before he tells us he was already, um, he had already done it, and the charter of the Moorish Temple of Science was now in effect as a civic um, corporation of the state of Illinois, but having its own jurisdiction as a subdivision of the city of Chicago, a private sector, all right? It was a private sector um, um, as the Catholic um, Church, Vatican City, um, did a year later, like we said, um, to be incorporated within Rome, um, Italy. Now, this is the importance of the um, Certificate of Corporation, which is the number 10580, known as the Charter, the first nationality card, as well as the adapt chamber, was formed under the original civic corporate status. And it was in these adept chambers, Moors was instructed and sent out with the learning um, truth of the Prophet Noble Drali, who was instructed to teach our people and erect temples um, in the name of the Moors Holy Temple of Science of the world, officially the Moors Temple of Science between 1926-1928. 19, um, now, of course, you can um, you can actually get a copy of this information. You can um, get Noble Dr. Ali, James um, Lomax Bay, Johnny Reynolds, Eddie Watts, and Sammy Rucker. Um, their names was actually on the one in 1926, in which they formed the civic organization. Right, that's and those are the individuals who was part of the council at that time. Um, as a matter of fact, James Lomax um, Bay was a director or trustee on the 1926 paperwork, like we was talking about for the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, but was not a director on the paperwork for the Moorish Science Temple of America. Um, in 1928, you will see the names um, on that on the particular paperwork. And you see the names, Noble Drali, um, Edward Milliel, um, Maul Bay, Lovett Bay, and Foreman Bay. Now, Foreman Bay's daughter is Mary Foreman Bay, who became Mary Drew Ali, um, the second wife of Prophet Noble Drali. And then we get more into her in the second here. Now, in the Moorish um, literature, it states in the Moorish Leader Historical Message to America, Prophet Nobu Ali states that we organized as the Moorish Temple of Science in the year 1925 and was legally incorporated as a civic organization under the laws of the state of Illinois, November 29, 1926. 
And since the work of the Moorish Science Temple of America was largely religious, the organization had been largely changed to a religious corporation as a um, and an affidavit to this effect had been properly filed in the county, um, Cook County Recorder Office in Illinois. The name Moorish Temple of um, Science was changed to the Moorish Science Temple of America, um, May 2nd, 1928, and a special meeting was called by July 20th, 1928, and the first governors or sheiks of the temples were named as the new board of directors for the now Moorish Science Temple of America on August 1st, 1928 at 2.52 p.m. The affidavit known as our authority and um, the form 1099 was filed in the um, county cook office as notification of the reorganizing of the temple, changing the status from a civic organization um, to a um, civic religious organization um, that was in accordance with the legal requirements of the Secretary of State of Illinois. And the reason why we say that it's still a civic organization is real simple is because um, they was never up under a 501c3. That did not come into effect until um, the 1960s, um, up under Lyndon B. Johnson. And as you see, um, know, many politicians were part of the Moral Science Temple of America. You can go and do your research on that. All right, matter of fact, up until 1934, um, until Charles Kirkman Bay uh, formed his Moral Science Temple of America Incorporated, um, you will see that the Moral Holy Temple of Science, as well as the Moral Science Temple of America, both was used. As a matter of fact, the late Grand Sheik Hamid Il said, when I became a member in the, uh, March 1928, the chart on the wall of the meeting hall read Moral Holy Temple of Science of the World. Our nationality cards read the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World. Later on in the year of 1928, the prophet said that he had to strike his charters. By that, in most of his temples, he had a strip of paper, a strip of paper, which read Moorish Science Temple of America, and this was pasted on the charters, covering up the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World. There was a few Moorish charters that he did not touch, one in Chicago, one in Charleston, West Virginia. And at that time, the questionnaire and the Quran read Moore's Holy Temple of Science. As a matter of fact, after the death of Prophet Noble Drali, um, many went back to using um, the Moore's, um Holy Temple of Science because it was corrupted, as they felt, by Charles Kirkman Bay because of the Moore's Science Temple of America Incorporated. And anyone who used Moorish Science Temple of America, um, they had a tendency of trying to take them to court. So everybody actually was um, the Emily Ills group in which that um, survived, as well as the John's Given Ills group. Both groups were using the Moorish Holy Temple of Science. All right. Now, Prophet Noble Drali organized the Moorish Science Temple along the line, similar to the Masonic Lodges. And if you don't want to believe that, then sorry for you. With local temple branches and adept chambers teaching that esoteric wisdom derived from the um, secret circles of the Eastern Sages, the master adepts of moral science. Now, the faith of Islam practiced by those um, who were members of the Moral Science Temple of America is likened to that of a Sufi degree of Islam. All right? Now, you for those who don't know, Sufi teachings are derived from ancient um, Kemet. As we'll get into that in a second, it says that the Moorish Science Temple of America in 1928 um, and in the Moorish Divine and National Movement of Religion, um, um, in the Moorish Divine National Movement, excuse me, our religion is Islamism. That's old time religion. Now, in the 101 Moorish Questionnaire, 17 question, it says, what is our religion? Answer is Islamism. 18. Is that a new or is that an old time religion? Answer old time religion. Now, in the oral statements and prophecies of Prophet Noble Drali, he states, You Moors don't recognize Islam because it is um because it is yours. Your religion is Islamism, something you live every day. Now in Sufism by um Hazrat Inayat, 
Khan states, Sufism originated from the ancient school of Egyptian mysteries, a school which existed even before Abraham, the father of three great religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, and is an allegory. Abraham is an allegory. Matter of fact, his name, Ab-Ra-Ham, is ancient comedic. Ab means father, Ra means son, Ham means black. All right, we'll get into that in a second. Also, those who know Sufism um, from superfi- um, superficial writings and sometimes from translation of the Arabic or Persian literature are apt to think that Sufism is the mystical side of Islam. In reality, it is not. Sufism existed before Muhammad, before Jesus um, Christ, before Abraham, because it was all allegory. So before those times. So before 1,400 years ago, before 2,000 years ago, before 4,000 years ago, all right? Now, you can read um, African-American religious cultures by um, Anthony B. Penn, um, Stephen C. Finley, and Torin Alexander, and they write that the Moors teach that our Islam is the translation of wisdom of the Egyptians, comedic systems of the, um, into the Arabic language. Okay, now, for those who don't know, Arabic is about 68% metuneta. All right? Hebrew is about 76%. Um, All right? By the Prophet Muhammad. All right? Now, once again, Prophet Muhammad is allegory. We're going to that in a few minutes also. When Ali taught, he called it Islamism. Islamism was to be understood as a much older than our Islam, the old time religion that descended from the ancient mystery system of Kemet or Egypt. The mysteries of Kemet represents humanity's moderate, earliest records, understanding of God and of the divine, and as such is the foundation of all the religions of the world. Now the esoteric um, um, in Islam today, which is called Tasafu, which is actually Sufism in Arabic. Um, one of the things is that Sufi or Sufism actually means wool, but many have made it out to be a woolen coat or worn as a woolen coat. But actually it's talking about the woolly hair because the hair is what brings down the frequencies of the cosmos. Those are your antennas. So Sufism actually is talking about how to draw down the energy of the cosmos and commune um, with the ancestors. And also, um, you read The Masons and the Moors by Mukmin Sabat Heddin. He states that Sufi masters are also renowned for communicating with their followers through dreams. There are numerous stories of Sufi saints appearing in, the, in their disciple dreams and using telepathy to direct followers to undertake a special mission. The Sufi master is revered by his disciples for being in contact with a level of higher consciousness. His mission on earth directs his high, is by higher power. Studying the lives of some of the greatest Sufi masters, you will often find them to be wandering holy men or women whose actions are wholly misunderstood by orthodox believers. The shrines of Sufi masters are centers of trance, dance, um, exorcism, and miraculous healing. All right. Now, these Sufi traditions is integral to more science. One and the same, as a matter of fact. All right. The initiation methodology of the um, ancient more science was designed to provide the necessary instructions and guidance for those um, who use the tools that would lead to apprentice towards mastery of the physical, mental, psychic, which is the soul and the spiritual plane. These keys for the higher functions and laws of the universe were imprinted via frequency into the minds of the adept to foster understanding of the greater Gnostics, which means the Noah, that created, governed, and guided the universe and its cosmic cycles. Now, you read in the Moorish Holy Quran, Sobre 7, it speaks about the revealers of light. Who are the revealers of light? For the revealers of light encompasses this great body of knowledge, all right, um, of the ancients, the ones that 
you know, that death has forgotten. Um, the names and titles for those um, elect luminaries differs upon the language and the degrees. An example of this can be found in the title in the seat of Melchizedek and Imhotep. All right. In Hebrew, Melchizedek is defined as the king of righteousness and peace, which is Hebrews the seventh chapter, first through the third verse. Just as Imhotep is defined in the Kemet or the Egyptian mysteries as the king of peace. So Melchizedek is actually taken from Imhotep, who actually did live and who was the third um, dynasty prime visor or prime minister. Okay. Now we know that Yahshua or Jesus was known as the Prince of Peace and he was after the order of Melchizedek. So he was after the order of Imhotep. All right. Matter of fact, all those who was initiated into the ancient mystery schools and who become healers are after the order of Imhotep. So that is the real individual that existed. And matter of fact, Imhotep um, is where they get the portion of the characterization of the Jesus character in your Bible. It comes from the actual living entity or being or person, natural person that is, um, who lived during the third, third dynasty and who was the prime visor under the, um, Jehuti, uh, who was known as um, Zozer. Right now, in the Morse for the Quran Circle 7, of course, um, you got the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ by Levi Dowling, in which that um, state how Jesus went through the ancient mystery school of Egypt and how to take seven initiations, and that's what happened during the 18 years, the 18 succumbing years from the age of 12 to the age of 30. When he um, was baptized in the River Jordan by um, John the Baptist. Of course, John the Baptist is Anpu or Anubis. All right? And Anpu was known as the baptizer. So we come to find out, uh, based on the storyline coming from out of ancient Kemet, then Jesus would be his rule. All right? He was half brothers. Or Saul um, had sex with Nebhet. In which that produce and pool. A phallus was made for him by Tahuti, in which that his wife, Arset, transformed her body into a bird, the ba, the soul, and flapped her wings hard enough in order to draw the essence out of him, hence the semen, in order to become impregnated, the immaculate conception, to produce her rule. Tahuti symbolizes in your Bible Gabriel, the angel, messenger of God, who came to Mary, which is Arset. Matter of fact, her name was Mary, is Arset Mary, M E R I, which became M A R Y. So all of this comes from the ancient mystery school. Your Bible, your Quran. Matter of fact, the Hindu texts, the Buddhist texts, all of these are ancient Egyptian texts. Ancient Egyptian information, the ancient mystery school. The esteemed scholar and researcher, um, Dr. George G. M. James, in his monumental book titled Stolen Legacy, which was written in 1954, wrote that Egyptian mystery school, which he maintained that was a complex system of neophyte initiation where it developed and worked in Kemet or Egypt. All right? As a matter of fact, um, you can get Man, God, and Civilization by Dr. John G. Jackson, 1972, in which that he speaks about Freemasonry as veiled in the Coptic Gnostic Egyptian text, and that the term Freemason is derived from the word Freemason, which is spelled P R E E M E S S E N, which meant the Son of Light. Or the sons of light. And these sons of light are the same the um divine entities identified in the Moorish Holy Circle set um Moorish Holy Quran Circle Seven as the revealers of light. 
He goes on to further and states that the term Freemason was traced back to the ancient Kemetic Empire, Egypt. It comes from a combined of two Kemetic words, free, which is P-H-R-E, the sun, and mass, M-A-S, a child, meaning children of the sun, and or sons and daughters of light. So these two words combine to make the word Freemason. The term originated in Egypt and proves that the first Freemasons were ancient Africans. It also shows that the order originated in Africa. And if you don't believe that, then you get primordial signs and symbols of man by our church ward. Frank C. Higgins also defines the Freemasons as the same. He has the word Freemason from Egypt written in 1923 in his books. And what is a Freemason? It's supposed to be an adept or a master in the ancient esoteric knowledge of the art, um, art, science, mathematics, and other great aspects of learning of the old world. The ancient super scientists were the ones that left the earth with codes written in astrological ideograms sacred languages such as hieroglyphics or metuneta and codify um, measurements and mathematical ratios. This is how they left it. This is why you can go into the Moorish Holy Quran Sophie 7 and it breaks down a whole chapter based on Freemasonry. I'll get into that in a second. But you can read more in the esoteric connection between the Moorish Revealers of Light and the Masonic Sons of Light by um, Z.A.L. Now, let's get into some of the influences. We have Levi Dowling, who was a Theosophic or Rosicrucian and Mystic. And he wrote the Aquarian Gospels of Jesus Christ of the Piscean Age, which was first published in 1908. And he is said to have basically tra- um, transcribed the text from the book, from the, um, from the Akashic Records. All right. Now, of course, the Akashic Records is the universal library in which that channel and information can actually come down. But this is what he said he um, gathered from. But when we get into the facts, we find out that um, the Moorish Americans are required to master the Holy Quran, which was a text written in 1926 by Prophet Nobu or prepared divinely by Prophet Nobu I should say. It was not to be confused with the Orthodox Quran inspired by the said Arabian Prophet Muhammad. Now, Drali's Holy Quran is an abbreviated version of the Tibetan text written by the Pali language before being translated into English. The more complete version of the Tibetan text is the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ written by Levi Dallas, and this is where he got his information from. Professor Drew took parts of the book from the Rosicrucian works unto D.I. Grant in 1925. Um, previous title, The Infinite Wisdom Lessons, 1923, published by the Amark, the ancient mystic order of the Rosicruz. And most of it, the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ, published in 1908 by esoteric um, Ohio preacher Levi Dowling. And in the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ, Dowling describes Jesus supposedly traveled to India, Egypt, and Palestine during the 18 years of his life, which was not accounted for by the New Testament. Right? So we know that Nobu Ali did not claim to be the author of the work per se. All right? Although the final sections of the Quran, chapter 45 through 48, um, are in his proverbial, um, are in his um, per, um, proverbial um, hand. All right. So the Quran is in three major sec- um, sections. It says chapter 2 to 19 contain the lost history of Jesus as a child and a young man. He travels in the teachings of the Palestine, um, Egypt, Asia Minor, and India. Um, the ministries of John the Baptist also fit heavily into the section. 
the most probable source for this material is the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. Although the man credits, you know, um, with his works be by Dallas as in case of Noble Ali did not claim authorship, but rather suggests that it was revealed or pre from a pretext, pre-existing text. All right. Um, the second major section of the Quran, chapter twenty through forty-four, seems to be derived from the ancient Egyptian text. From clues of the text, it has been suggested that the twentieth-century scholar, familiar with archaeological discoveries in Egypt, that most of the book was written sometime after thirteen sixty BCE by Amenhotep IV, who was known as Akhenaten, Pharaoh of Egypt, all right, or Nugu. And by some of his successors in the great Egyptian school of mysticism. Right now, this is coming from Professor Ravana Bay, um, third um, generation um, more scientist, Moorish um, part of the Moorish Science Temple of America, as well as also he was one of the principal um, educators. As a matter of fact, he was the minister of education for. The Washington D. Doug Demonia. And you can find this article, and it's called The Moorish American Prophet Noble Drali. He says, Virtually nothing is known with certainty about the life of, of um, Moorish American Prophet Noble Drali. Very little has survived in the form of written documents. Born Timothy, Timothy Drew on January the 8th, 1886, in the state of North Carolina, Drew received the Muslim name Sharif Abdul Ali while studying in Egypt. The name of his mother and father has not survived. However, his mother said to be have been of a Moorish extraction, and he is said to have been of a direct descendant of the Moors of the Northwest Africa. And Jews Ali mother is said to be to have been of Cherokee ancestry. Um, by the early 1800s, the Drew family is known to have settled in Newark, New Jersey. However, it is in New York City that the Drew family is said to have been taught by the great Muslim master adept Jamal al Adin al Afghani, who came to visit the United States in the winter of 1883, um, 1882-1883. Um, al Afghani is said to have been joined by his disciple and chief initiate Muhammad Abdel. The two Muslim missionaries had come to the United States to propagate the doctrine of the ancestral and the cultural pride. All right, under the banner of pan-Islam, which is meant to ensure that the divine teachings of the ancestors are not forgotten amongst the Moors of North America. In other words, the teachings of Sufism, because he actually was a Sufi um, practitioner. To be sure, it is in response to the divine teaching of al Ghani and Muhammad Akhdar um, that the Moorish American National Movement was founded by Prophet Nobu Ali in 1916. With the arrival of Afghani, the Drew family became the chief supporters of Salafaya and Pan Afghanism. And at hand, Al Afghani, Drew family was inducted into the sacred order, all right, known as the Brethren of Purity, a Sufi esoteric brotherhood. This brotherhood practiced a combined form of Neo um, Pythagoreanism and Neo Platonism, Platonism. Now, of course, um, Pythagoras, Pythagoras, and um, Platon, Plato, Plato um, is not have been found out that they was um, allegories also, but themselves derived from the ancient Egyptian mystery school. So that's where it's derived from. From the Western perspective, this form of esotericism will appear to be drawn from two opposing principles. And it says in the double truth theory propagated before Ibn Rashid, and it says this form of esotericism is, is best known in the Muslim world as the, Illumin the Illuminators traditions. So Illuminati um, traditions, whose chief advocate was Ishmael ibn Jafar al-Sadid and Mullah 
Shadora. Now, it says, in his early teenage years, Drew Ali arrived in Egypt to study amongst the great neophytes of the Afghani and Mohammed Abdel. While studying at the Al-Azhar University, Drew Ali came under the influence of Mohammed Rashid Rida and Aziz Ali al Masri Bey, as well as the great Egyptian nationalist Deuce Muhammad Ali Ifani Bey, who lived in London, England at the time. And of course, Deuce Muhammad Ali Ifani Bey was also the teacher to, um, to John the Baptist, as we refer to him as um, the forerunner to Prophet Nubu Ali, known as um, Sir Messiah um, Garvey. Marcus Garvey, all right? And Drew Ali is also said to have studied at the old Ethiopian college in the Vatican City, Rome, Italy. Having returned to the United States in 1916, Drew Ali immediately organized the Morris Science Temple of America and launched the Morris National Movement. In his efforts, Drew Ali was greatly influenced by Marcus Garvey, as well as the Hebrew Philosophian Rabbi um, Arnold Josiah uh, Ford, and Rabbi Wentworth, author Matthew. Now, both of them was also members of Marcus Garvey movement, um, back to Africa movement, or what is known as um, the UNIA, the Universal Negro Improvement Association. And on July 20th, 1929, Drew is said to have veiled the form and to have gone into occultation. With respect to the Sociality and uh, authorized um, of Jesus, Drew Ali, like the Holy Prophet Muhammad, is acknowledged as a um, messiah, a peripheral messiah. In this regard, Drew Ali is believed to have been a secondary prophet. Jesus is held to be a primary prophet. The term messiah, however, is applied to both Jesus and Drew Ali, as well as the Holy Prophet Muhammad. For all the true prophets are identified as the Logos incarnated. In other words, the word made flesh. And as Prophet Nubu Ali says within um, the particular teachings, um, that angels as well as um, us, man, women, are mere thoughts of Allah, God in flesh. Now, the primary um, prophet to the fullest extent and the secondary prophet to the lesser extent, to be sure, both Jesus and Drew Ali are knowledge by Moorish Americans as the realization and actualization of the Logos, for all of humanity is endowed with the Logos for its embryonic beginning. Moorish Americans are required to master the Holy Quran, a text written in 1926 by the Prophet Nubu Ali. It is not to be confused. And this is what he said. He's saying the same thing that we were just talking about, not to be confused with the Holy Quran of the Arabian Prophet Muhammad. Um, Dr. Ali, Holy Quran is a rewritten version of the text from Tibet, written in the Palian language before the translation into English. Um, the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ, edited by Alfonso Lee Countess under the pseudonym um, Elaphis Levi Dallins. Now, for those who don't know, Elaphis Levi um, was actually a teacher of um, and actually gave up his seat as being head of the Rosicrucians in the world to um, the Moor by the name of Pastel Beverly Randolph. We'll get into that in a few also. There's a lot of things we got to get back to because there's so much information. And I don't have but so much time to get through it. Um, but um, he goes on in the article on July the 20th, 1929. Ali expired, but two weeks after his death, Sheikh John Given Ill publicly announced that he was the reincarnated Prophet Nubu Ali, August 7, 1929, at a meeting held at the Parthians Hall, 3737 South um, Street, um, State Street in Chicago. John Given Ill was a native of Sumter, South Carolina. He came, um, he had come to Chicago May 14, 1925, then shortly thereafter embraced the teachers of Nobu Ali. Suffice to say that the authority of Sheikh John Given Ill was contested first by Abdullah Farad Muhammad Ali and both by both Millie Ill and Kirkman Bay. 
the latter two went on to establish their own separate Moorish science temples. The former, however, also known as Professor Foy, converted one of the Detroit temples to his own temple of the lost found people of Islam. In other words, he called it the Temple of Islam, which became later on the Nation of Islam, in which they have said earlier that um, in the 1920s, uh, Drew Ali and them was also referred to their temples as the Temple of Islam. Now, Paul Robert Poole Bay, also known as Elijah Bay, uh, Muhammad, was a convert of Farad. And when Farad returned to the Middle East, I mean, Elijah assumed leadership and changed his name to Allah's temple and changed the name to Allah's temple of Islam. All right. Now, he didn't really turn to the Middle East. He actually went to California. Um, we'll get into that in a few, too. Now, with the death of Elijah in 1975, the leadership of the temple of Islam was divided between um, Elijah's son, Wafi Muhammad, and Louis Farrakhan. The Moorish American ethnic group has um, subdivided into three um, autonomous sects now headed by following Sheikhs, Muhammad um, Ali L, the son of Sheikh John Gibbon L, Jerome Bay, and All Love L. All right. Now, we're going to get into some other information here. By the first convention of, of um, the Moral Science Temple of 1928, its membership has flourished. The second Supreme Grand Business Manager, Aaron Payne L., was quoted that the numbers were well over 12,000 in 1928. And 15 temples was established in 10 different states. However, when Prophet Nubi Dralee veiled from July 20, 1929, Prophet Nubi Dralee had established 19 branch temples and 20 subordinate temples, and his Membership ran well over 100,000. Okay. Faithful members and followers that established more businesses, newspapers, schools, and Prophet Nobu Drali became a early voice in the nationalist movement. Now, being that there was so much money that was being made, Jealousy arose, and by 1929, Nobu Ali has created a multi-million dollar um, empire, and jealousy provoked several of the um, MSTA high-level businessmen. One of his officers was um, Sheikh um, Claude D. Green Bay, who accused Prof. Nobu Ali of wasting um, MSTA revenue on himself and a succession of women. One of Drew Ali's wives was a lady that Claude Green admired and loved. So that would be the reason in which that prompted him in order to make the accusations, in which that supposedly $8,000 was missing from the funds. Um, and so um, it is alleged that um, her, um, who actually was Pearl Dwight Lee, um, and um, Sheikh Claude Green Bay had an affair. And this is what popped off everything in which that caused the problem. And so you'll find an article in which that states that Brother Green Bay quit business manager post. And he goes on in order to um, not only quit the post, but to um, actually, you know, um, take Prophet Noble Drali things out of the office at the Unity Hall and, and um, put them out on the side of the street. And he himself declared himself as the head of the Moral Science Temple of America. And this is what happened. So Prophet Nubu Ali was already warned. Um, you know, he already started warning them. One in particular, he um, warned um, Supreme Grand Governor James Lomax Bay um, on December the 27th, 1928. All right. And um, Drew attended a meeting on February 15th, 1929, where Supreme Grand Governor James Lomax Bay stated that he was now in power and the finances was now in front of um, 
And he said this in front of 1,500 members and the prophet himself, which bought, um, was bought um, about charges of embezzlement of about the $8,000. And the money that um, profit had been using for the MSCA business on Saturday, on Sunday, on that particular Sunday. Now, Supreme Grand Business Manager Claude Green Bay held a special meeting with Brother James Lomax Bay about removing the profit and replacing um, Brother James Lomax Bay as the new head and even starting their own organization if necessary because it was believed by them that Brother James Lomax Bay had enough followers in Detroit and that Brother Claude Green Bay had enough followers, including um, Brother Smalls Bay and Sister Pearl Durali and Brother Charles Kirkman Bay to pull it off. He was the individuals in which that betrayed Prophet Noble Durali. The original members of the Supreme Grand Council, Prophet Noble Durali, it was Brother um, George Blackwell Bay of Chicago, Brother Richard Ross Bay, Chicago, Governor James Lomax Bay of Detroit, Michigan, Temple 4, Governor Emily Ill, Chicago, Temple 1, Brother Claude Green Bay, um, Temple 1, and Sister Pearl Durali, Temple 1. And the Supreme Grand Council position was um, were Supreme Grand um, Chairman, Supreme Grand Sheep, Supreme Business Manager, Supreme Grand Governor, Supreme Historian, Supreme Treasurer, and Supreme Secretary. Nevertheless, they thought that they had enough followers. And the temples was 3, 4, 7, 9, 15, and 18 at that time. And the prophet heard about this coup and held a special meeting with the Supreme Council. You know, in other words, um, those who were not treacherous and issued a proclamation saying, um, um, signed by the prophet of Ali that um, and Emilio and T. Crumley Bay and C. Charles Bay removing four members, those four members from the council. Brother James Lomax Bay, Brother Claude Green Bay, Sister Pearl um, Drew Ali, who was the wife of Prophet Nobu Ali, and Smalls Bay immediately having all their credentials revoked and dismissed um, and dismissed them from their official position and enrollment. So the prophet changed the Supreme Council around. And Aaron Hall replaced Claude Green Bay as the Supreme um, Business Manager. And um, Richard H. Ross Bay replaced Claude Green as the um, Managing Editor of the Morris Guide newspaper. And Supreme Grand um, Governor um, James Nomax Bay was replaced by Grand Sheik David Ford L. And this is something in which that isn't talked about. The Supreme um, Secretary Sister Pearl Drali was replaced by Supreme Secretary Sister Mary Drali, who was forming um, Ali's um, daughter, uh, forming um, um, Bay's daughter, excuse me. And by March 1929, that struggle for power erupted between the Prophet Noble Drali and his former business manager, Claude um, Green Bay. And Claude Green Bay now staged his own coup by pronouncing himself the Supreme Grand Chairman. And Prophet Nubu Ali files, uh, files and furniture was thrown out onto the street. And Claude Green Bay took a number of Nubu Ali's followers along with him. So Prophet Nubu Ali requested um, Ira Johnson Bay from um, Pittsburgh and others to quell the rebellion. As a matter of fact, um, it was even said um, um, to, take it, um, to remove the bad tooth. And after the meeting with Ira Johnson Bay and others, I'm um, helped with Prophet Noble Drali after this situation. Ira Johnson Bay allegedly took it um, um, upon himself to remove the problem called the bad tooth altogether. And Ira Johnson Bay and three other members paid Claude Green a visit on March 21st, 1929. And there was a fight that broke out um, behind the Boosters Club where Unity Hall was located at 3140 Indiana Avenue. Where Claude Green Bay was shot by Ira Johnson Bay and stabbed multiple times. Later, Small Bay admitted it was Ira Johnson Bay that had done the shooting to the police. It was Brother Small's Bay testimony about the meeting that Prophet Noble Drali held 
before the meeting that caused the police to charge the prophet in connection with it and take him to jail. And Brother Smalls Bay, um, having been upset about having been removed from the office and replaced by William, um, by William um, Mo- um, Morris Bay, um, Morris L. By the Supreme Grand Council for Support, Claude Green and um, James Lomax. And on March 22nd, 1929, um, shots were also fired at James Lomax at Temple Number no. 4, supposedly by Ira Johnson Bay, who was said to have been seen outside um, on a local phone. But he was missed. And a fight broke out between those loyal to James Lomax and those loyal to the Prophet. Then a full riot broke out of two officers and two malls got badly hurt. All right, and the two malls that got hurt was um, S. Stone Bay and Z. Lloyd Bay. However, during the time of the shooting, it is said that Drew was out of town and he was dealing with Supreme Grand Sheik James Lomax Bay. And James Lomax Bay had also supported James um, Claude Green Bay attempt, um, attempted coup um, as he staged his own a month earlier. James Lomax um, eventually left the country during the preceding turmoil and went to Turkey and changed his name to Professor um, Azaldin Muhammad and returned in the 1930s from Egypt and founded the Adinu Alahi Universal Arabic Association, a Sunni organization. And then when Drew Ali returned to Chicago, the police arrested him um, and other members of the community on suspicion of having instigated the killing or accessory to homicide, but no indictment was um, sworn um, for Drew Ali at the time. So Drew was arrested and allegedly beaten by the cops and released on bond or bail pending an indictment. And Prophet Drew um, promoted David Ford L, a.k.a. Master Fra Muhammad, as it is said, even though the nation is now publicly denies this, as the acting head Supreme Grand Chairman in place of the Supreme Grand Sheik, um, Emilio. Because we know that Emilio was the Supreme Grand Sheik. And he, oftentimes when the prophet left, um, he would take over Temple Number 1. But it's been stated that Supreme Grand Sheik, Emilio, was allegedly threatened and beaten by a death Charles Kirkman Bay and was in hiding. So Prophet Nobudrali said that if you want European Grand Sheiks, I'll give them to you. Anyway. Personal researchers found that Freud knew Drali well, and that Freud, um, Master Freud Muhammad, or known as David Ford L, moved secretly throughout America for 20 years before he um, started to open aspects of his works according to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And Prophet Nubu Drali passed form on, on Saturday, um, July 20th, 1929, at his home, 3603 Indiana Avenue at 1010 10 p.m. at the age of 43. The same date, one year later, earlier, uh, when the corporate body also officially changed and reorganized in its form as the more Science Temple of America. That was no coincidence. That was a ritual. So at this bedside was Doctor. Um, at his bedside was Doctor. Clarence Payne L. Attorney Anthony Payne. Um, Aaron Payne L. Who was the son of Clarence Payne L. His father-in-law, Brother Foreman Bay, and the prophet's wife, Sarah Mary Drew Ali. Now, Dr. Clarence Payne L. fell the, birth, um, the death certificate, which proclaimed that the prophet died of tuberculosis pneumonia, which I've actually seen a copy of. Although the exact circumstances of his death is unknown, the autopsy ruled that, um, even though there was never an official autopsy, but this is what they stated, that he died of pneumonia and tuberculosis, even though he was curing pneumonia and tuberculosis with his herbs and with his own remedies. Despite the official report, many of the followers suspected that um, his death was caused by injury from the police or from temple members vibing for Ali's position had killed him. And one more told the Chicago defense or defender, that the prophet was not ill. His work was done, and he had laid his head upon the lap of one of his followers and just passed out. According to the oral statements of prophecy by Prophet Nubadrali, 
um, brother um, I Cook Bay of Illinois said that the Holy Prophet said, if I cannot teach you here, I will teach you on the soul plane. Nevertheless, a, a autopsy was never conducted in a full um, scale police investigation never conducted. Nevertheless, the prophet's body was taken to Frank Edwards Funeral Parlor at 4136 Michigan um, Avenue, and the fu- uh, funeral services was held Friday, July 26, 1929, at 1.30 p.m. at the Pe- um, Parthian um, Temple on 37th Place and State Street. The prophet's body was laid to rest at the Bureau Oak Cemetery, Acadia Lawn, Lot 44, Grave 7. Now, there's an article of Aaron Payne in which that um, shows um, him with white gloves on um, at the head of them leading the prophet's body, um, the coffin. And at the bottom of the article, um, it states that he was going to be the new head of the organization. So we have another person in which that was vibing obviously for power. It is said that he even took um, the chart off the wall with him, storming out of the um, conference of 1929. But we'll get to that in a second. And actually, allegedly, Charles Kirkman Bay of Temple Nine conducted the funeral rites of Prophet Noble Drali. Yet, um, allegedly, he was one of the co-conspirators. Nevertheless, um, the one who was supposed to be put in charge was Supreme Grand Sheik Edward Milly Ill. And as a matter of fact, Supreme Grand Sheik Edward Milly Ill wrote to Supreme Business Manager Aaron Payne L. dated August 14th, 1929, in reading your letter to Brother Thomas and L. a few minutes ago, and in view of the wishes of the prophet as laid down in his laws to me by myself, I wish to call your attention to the fact that um, it was all his will that um, we hold the coming convention of 1929, beginning September 15th to the 20th of the same month. And he goes on, my objection is only that the date which was made by the prophet is considered law. Um, with me and remember all that he said as long as you do that I will tell you you will be all right but when you fail to obey my orders you will have trouble having talked this matter over with all the governors I um I find them all in favor of supporting the date of the convention to lay down our profit now as business manager I am asking you to give way to the time of the profit's choice and arrange your dates accordingly which began September 15th to September 20th inclusive this will give also give them more time for the preparation of the same. We must all do what we can for peace, for the progress um, of um, advance may manifest itself in all of our actions. This is done all else as well. Trusting this meeting, your approval. I am your brother in Islam, Edward Emilio. Um, in another letter, he goes on to say, um, in the same um, day, he told um, Aaron Payne to stay in line with the proper structure and practices from the time of the National Convention to hold the Adept Chamber meetings and at the second Moorish Science Temple of America annual convention, um, Supreme Grand Sheik Emilia Ill nominated Charles Kirkman Bates to the position of Supreme Grand Moderator and Advisor. Even so, it was approved by two-thirds of the vote. Many loyal um, followers of Prophet Nubu Ali stormed out of the 1929 Convention. Um, Supreme Business Manager Aaron Payne L. even took the MSTA charter with him. And Ira Johnson Bay was highly upset with the Supreme Grand Sheik, um, Edward Miller Ill, for not nominating him for the position of Supreme Grand Advisor and Moderator. So he was trying to take charge of the movement, start with the people who had the paperwork first and foremost. So um, he had some of his followers to go after Aaron Payne L. We lived at 3722 um, um, Perry um, Avenue, who took the MSTA charter on September 23rd, 1929. And these men was um, J. Mosbay L. and J. Davis L. and G. Johnson Bay and S. Gibbons Bay. And on September 25th, 1929, Ira Johnson Bay had 
more of his father's kidnap Charles Kirkman Bay to get the certificate Charles Kirkman Bay had been given when nominate when um, appointed Supreme Grand Advisor and Moderator, which he said to have 21 um, governors, the original title of the Grand Six signatures upon it um, from the um, said 21 temples. Um, he also claimed to possess Prophet Nubadrali's last will and testament. Now, Johnson Bay told him that Brother Kirkman Bay must be brought in, and I want the sheiks to go after him, and you better um, arm yourselves, and in case he refused to come in voluntarily, you can use force and bring Kirkman Bay dead or alive, and by all means, get the certificate. All right? So they went to Charles Kirkman Bay's house at 442 West Elm Street and took him in front of his wife in broad daylight and forced him into a waiting taxi cab. You know, then they took him back to Ira Johnson Bay at 4137 um, South Parkway, you know, which actually was the home of Compton um, Johnson Bay. And some of these um, men were um, D. Francis Jackson Bay, Mosey Jackson Bay, um, Eugene Jackson Bay, who was the father of um, Mosey Jackson Bay, and J. Stevenson Bay, who was killed by Sergeant Frank um, Reynolds. And it was Mosey Jackson Bay, Eugene Jackson Bay, father, that took Charles Kirkman Bay physically out of his home. A member at 3140 um, Indiana Avenue told the police about Mosey Johnson Bay's involvement, and they went to his house at 20, um, 11297 Townsend Street. From there, Mosey Johnson Bay led the police to where Charles Kirkman Bay was held, and the police arrived around 11 a.m., to rescue Brother Charles Kirkman Bay. And it was Sergeant O'Tully, um, O'Tully um, that finally found Charles Kirkman Bay, who yelled out, don't shoot, I'm the man you're looking for. Please save me. Nevertheless, Ira Johnson Bay was finally arrested after a shootout with the police and over 1,000 police officers surrounded the house. And Ira Johnson Bay refused to release Charles Kirkman Bay and when the police tried to break in and rescue him. A shootout ensued. And subsequently, approximately 64 members were arrested, even Supreme Grand Sheik Emily Hill. And it was reported that over 100 bullets was fired, less, um, and at least three dead, one being a follower of Ira Johnson Bay. And Ira Johnson Bay was charged with murdering a police officer, which was William um, Gallagher. And the other police officer... Um, Jesse D. Hall Killer is unknown Alright so it wasn't until later While in prison he started calling himself a Law L and gained a little small Following from there and at depth John Given L um, stayed in contact With him up until um, he passed From December the 5th 1949 Alright um, In 1929 um, Sister Mary um, Drew Ali the prophet's second wife began writing letters to the members hoping to bring everybody back together as it was under the prophet. And in one of the letters, she wrote that our grand sheik is, the, um, is in the lion's den and the demons are everywhere trying to um, tear down the movement. The grand sheik she was referring to was, of course, Supreme Grand Sheik Edward E. Melio, who, um, who had not yet been released from jail. You know, um, And so all of the traitors now um, began um, began led being led by Charles Kirkman Bay and his rebels, later be formed the Moral Science Temple of America Incorporated. Now, by 1934, Mary Drew Ali, feeling nothing left um, to do um, to fight the um, demons, as she referred to them as, um, and under her father's um, brother, Foreman Bay, directly requests Mary Drew Ali to give in to Charles Kirkman Bay and his Morris Temple of America Incorporated group and gave them all of her official paperwork. And this gave Charles Kirkman Bay even more determination. Okay. And see, this is the information which that isn't being told to people. And this is why the confusion. And so Supreme Grand Advisor and Moderator Charles Kirkman Bay, as he was called, attempted to take over the Moorish um, movement from Supreme Grand Sheik Emilio. And on September 26, um, 1930, Supreme Grand Sheik Emilio sent Charles Kirkman Bay an official temple letter 
and two other temples that the credentials of those listed below was revoked. It was Charles Kirkman Bay, M. Gov L, T. W. Um, Osley Bay, F. Nelson Bay, who um, F. Nelson Bay becomes the second. I'm up under Charles Kirkman Bay to hold the position in the Morris Science Temple of America Incorporated, and E. Mentor Bay, um, M. Cliff Bay, um, C. Charles um, Charles Bay. Now it's funny that C. Charles um, Bay um, actually was posing um, with Prophet Noble Drali because he became part of the Supreme Council, and so right after um, that, um, actually he started um, pulling away. And started trying to do his own thing or whatever the case is. But he his name is taken off the um roll as well as also his credentials his credentials are stripped. And you have H. Glover L, C. Smith Bay, H. Dove L, J. Traller Bay, J. Williams Bay, and J. Smith Bay, and G. Cook Bay, and I. Cook Bay, and M. I. Washington Bay, and etc. There's about 16 of them or so. Therefore, between 1930 and 1934, Charles Clement Bay tries to upsurge Supreme Grand Sheik Emily Ill, and in 1934, he sets up his own MSTA Incorporated under a new set of rules and regulations. And he's held this position, and he held that position from 1934 until 1959 when he passed away. Later, after the 1930s, um, once Charles Clement Bay's faction, um, faction began to strengthen itself, there was three Petitions filed in court against Supreme Grand Sheik Emilio. And that was February the 13th, 1931, by J. Jones Bay. February the 23rd, 1932, by Charles Crumley Bay. And 1933, by S. Lovett Bay and T. Crumley Bay. Um, that was vacated on November 22nd, 1933. Now, all of these petitions were to remove Supreme Grand Sheik Emilio and place Supreme Grand Advisor and Moderator. Charles Kirkman Bay as the head of the Morris movement, and all of them fell. All of them fell. Matter of fact, J. Um, Shelby L. of Temple Number no. One even tried to get the leadership of Temple Number no. One from Supreme Grand Sheik Emilio. And on January the 22nd, 1935, by filing um, with the courts against him, and he fell. But he took some members with him that started their own Temple group. By this time, the only thing the Supreme Grand Sheik had left was Temple One. And his legal possessions, Moore's documents, which everyone was still after. And so in 1935, Supreme Grand Sheik um, Edward E. Miller Ill died on a business trip, and his wife, um, Diala um, L., received her, um, his possessions. Even so, the dishonor and belittled the um, latter Supreme Grand, the late Supreme Grand Sheik Edward E. Miller Ill., Moore's Science Temple of America Incorporated, and the former um, Supreme Grand Sheik and moderator started saying, um, he died in a mental inst um, institution. And you can get this information from the controversial years of the Moral Science Temple of America by Chief Minister um, Dr. Ross Adiel. Now, um, here's a letter type from um, Supreme Grand Sheik Emilio to Charles Kirkman Bay dated um, September 26, 1930. And it says that Charles Kirkman Bay, um, Brother Charles Kirkman Bay, this is to notify you that the above named organization, Moral Science Temple of America, in convention, September 9th of 15th to 20th, we consent by voting out the mistake made by the second annual convention of 1929. And in so doing, you held your um, membership role. And when our profit was here, we hope you will cooperate with the organization under the five principles. We hope further that you will comply with this notice and govern yourself accordingly, as there is but one Supreme Grand Advisor in the Morris um, Science Temple of America, and that's being Prophet of Ali. And all and anyone else who attempts to be from now on is assumed authority on himself and is liable for the penalties of law. Peace. More Science Temple of America, Noble Drali founder, Emily Ill, chairman. All right, Foster um, um, Hall, 44, and State Street, Chicago, Illinois. So, as you see, as you see, um, that's what actually took place. And as a matter of fact, there also was um, a verdict in which that was passed down through the court in which that we've talked about that they fell. And you can actually find this. And it says that the document is the verdict in favor of Supreme Grand Sheik Edward E. Ill by Judge 
Eberhardt on May 7, 1931, case number 1746990 against Charles McVeigh mm -hmm. and his Moore Science Temple of America Incorporated. In other words, Charles Crimson Bay Group lost. This is why by 1934, they had to use the Moore Science Temple of America Incorporated. But they never could get the reins of the original Moore Science Temple of America. And being that it was incorporated um, later on um, by the 1960s, um, they end up falling up under the 501c3. And no longer up under the 508 which that was up under the Hearst on stat on um, statutes. All right, so this is some of the things in which that took place, and many um, brothers and sisters going around spouting that um, that they know more information, you know, and really they don't because very few. Um, grand sheiks or sheiks have actually spoken out about this. I am also a grand sheik of the most holy temple of science of the world. And so therefore it is our duty to tell you the truth of what actually took place. And it would, um, on Millie Ill's own words is that I joined the movement on January the 1st, 1927 and on June 1st, 1927 I was approved of and appointed by the Prophet Nubu Ali as the first um, assistant chairman of the Morris um, Science Temple of America. And on the 1st of August of the same year, I received an appointment for the Prophet as the general chairman of the said Morris Science Temple of America and was made Grand Sheik under the Prophet in February 1928. I wrote insurance for the Prophet in the year 1928, and at the close of, um, of the said year, in the first annual convention, the Divine Prophet Noble Ali promoted me to the office of and rank of Supreme Grand Sheikh. This promotion by the Prophet took place in the first setting of the Supreme Grand Council, representing the Morris Science Temple of America, and in public meeting at 3140 Indiana Avenue in the month of November 1928, the Prophet made it very plain in the three statements that he was the Supreme Grand Head, Brother Edward E. Meliel was Supreme Grand Sheik next to me, the prophet, and that means all the temples in this um, government, and that there is but one more science temple of America, and this is mine. And Nobu Ali at the um, official meeting in February 1928, 1929, I was made shepherd of his flock by him and was told by him to feed his lambs and his sheep. All right, so, prophet um, Nobu Ali chose Edward E. Mili Il as the Supreme Grand Sheik, which was the position um, under him. So with the death of Prophet Nobu Ali, you can actually see a picture of Edward E. Mili Il sitting in the chair or in the seat of Prophet Nobu Ali. And this is the only picture in which that we have, even though they said that John Given Il sat, into, sat in that seat. And states that he was the reincarnated prophet, but the picture in which that we have is of Edward Emiliel, um, who we know actually was made the Supreme Grand Sheik. Now, this is another thing about the problem with the destruction of the temple of the more science of Prophet Nobu Dwali. Um, Brother Edward Emiliel stated that the Holy Prophet told him, You do what I told what I tell you, never mind what they say. I have given you law, Quran, and Constitution, and I expect for you to enforce my law and do what I say. Never mind what they say or do. They can do nothing but die. Now, Deila, um, Millie Ill, the wife of Supreme Grand Sheik, Edward E. Millie Ill, tried to use Supreme Grand Sheik E. Millie Ill's paperwork to introduce William Morris L., who was her lover, in 1935 as the Supreme Grand Sheik. And Edward E. Millie Ill's successor, but this failed as William Morris L. was rejected by the remaining members of the Temple One, number one, over time. And several members took what was left of the lawful um, Temple paperwork, the original Articles of Incorporation, and gave it to Charles Kirkman Bates Group, the Morris Science Temple of um, Incorporated, Incorporated, thus solidifying his or their position even more. Many or claim it to be the real temple, number one, of Grand Sheik, um, 
Edward E. Milley L. Most have to appear to be temple charters for the home office. However, the original home office stopped existing when um, Sister Diala um, Mosley L. officially ended it. And um, a temple charter by itself only gives one commission to start a temple, not a home office. So Prophet Nogadrali warned this would take this movement down so low that it would disappear from the face of the earth. And that's exactly what happened. So there is no original more Science Temple of America. It was destroyed. The home office, the last of the temple, even though there are some who um, say that they have resurrected it. But anyone now can say that they have resurrected it. And that's the problem which that happens with the Great Schism. Because anyone came along after the death of Prophet Nobu Ali and used the teachings in order to say that they have resurrected something. But there was more disturbing things in which that occurred um, after Prophet Nobu Ali's passing, um, passed of form. But before the um, Second Moorish Science Temple of America Annual National Convention that caused further splits, Sheikh Abdat um, John Given L publicly announced that he was the reincarnated Prophet Noble Jali, like I said, August the 7th, 1929. And at that meet, um, meeting that was held at the Pothians Hall, 3737 um, South State Street, Chicago, three weeks later on September the 19th, 1929, during the second annual National Convention of the Moral Science Temple of America, John Given L uh, would once again make his declaration of reincarnation. And the Moorish Convention was um, entered into its final hours. Lengthy discussions have been held concerning the Prophet's last instruction. And it was around this time that John Given Ill entered the convention hall, walked straight up to the pole, um, platform, and he sits himself in the vacant seat and declares, I am back. And then said, I am Prophet Noble Drali, reincarnated, and Prophet Noble Drali, the founder. We are two, um, we two are one and the same. And silence fell over the um, convention hall. However, when a vote was finally taken, two-thirds of the delegates voted. Still, Charles Kirkman Bay to be the Supreme Grand um, Advisor and Moderator, assistant to, assistant to Edward E. Milley Ill, who is the Supreme Grand Chief and the official head of the Moorish Movement. You know, so nevertheless, by the end of September, a number of subordinate temples would begin to uh, follow John Given Ill, the reincarnated prophet, and this faction um, developing to the reincarnated um, more scientific America um, as well as also the reform more science of America and later the more science temple the divine and national movement of North America and several other branches in which that came from out of that now based on the Macaraben um, filed by Brother R. Edward L. He states that um, shortly um, that upon coming of age, John Given L. traveled west, finally settling in Chicago, Illinois, May 14, 1925. Shortly thereafter, he embraced the teachings of Prophet Nubadra Ali and joined and became a member of the Chicago Subordinate Temple Number 1 in 1926. After a brief period in the temple, he was initiated into his adept chamber and he also became the Chauffeur mechanic for the Prophet Nubadrali. It was reported that one day while working on the Prophet's automobile shortly after his death, John Given Ill fainted. When his eyes were examined, he had the sign of the star and crescent in one eye and the seven seal in the other. Right then, they knew the Prophet had reincarnated into his chauffeur. Now, that's coming from the Merkabin, um the Merkab, um the Merkab Robin um, file. Okay. See, there was some mysticism um, in which that was utilized in order to draw um, crowds, and it was used in a religious manner, a miraculous manner, in order to bring um, people, you know, especially after the death of Prophet Nabi Ali, it was very easy to sway the minds of the people. You know, another strange incident in which that occurred a month before the death of Prophet Nubadrali is that Prophet Nubadrali um, went out um, while out on bail waiting indictment. He appoints um, Sheikh D. 
David Ford L. acting supreme grand chairman of the Lord's Son Temple of America. Some say it was merely over the Temple One, but um, normally when um, Prophet Nibadrali is out of town, Temple One is held, um, um, is left to Supreme Grand Sheikh Edward Emily Hill. But like we said, where were Supreme Grand Sheikh Emily Hill when this appointment was made? Um, as we said, that um, obviously um, he was threatened and even beaten, according to some reports, by Charles Kirkman Bay. So obviously, Edward Millie Hill was not around during his time period, and Prophet Nubadra Ali had to appoint someone he knew and trusted. Okay? And so, David Ford Hill claimed that Drew Ali had left him in charge and declared himself the reincarnation of Nubadra Ali also. All right? And arguments erupted over the issue of the proper successor. Those who had been loyal to Claude Green Bay argued that David Ford Hill had not been with the Morris Science Temple long enough to succeed um, Drali and insisted that Charles Kirkman Bay, the former schoolmate of Prophet Noble Drali, um, but one of Green's closest allies, wanted to assume the position. And another faction handed down by Ira Johnson Bay claimed that Charles Kirkman Bay was unfit. And the Moore Science Temple remained a divided house, as it still do to this day. And thousands of members swore their allegiance to David Ford Hill, but the majority rejected him and decided to be loyal to Charles Kirkman Bay. And the inner violence, the arrests, and the several predominant members, and the bawling scandal that followed promoted David Ford Hill or fraud to break away from the MSTA. Fearful for his own safety, David Ford Hill, who becomes Master Fraud Muhammad, allegedly um, moved to um, Detroit, Michigan. And as we said, he opens up, um, he um, takes the temple which that was by James Lomax Bay in Detroit, Michigan, and he takes that temple and transforms it into um, the Temple of Islam, or the Temple of the Lord's Found um, Temple of Islam. Or the Temple of the Lord's Found People of Islam. Of course, that becomes um, a Lord's Temple of Islam, or which they become the Lord's Found Nation of Islam in the wilderness of North America. Now, some say that this was not the for, on Ford, but David Ford L. or Ford name is mentioned in um, the Moorish literature, the Industrious Act of the Muslims. The name Ford is mentioned twice in paragraph um, in um, in the second paragraph. Ford is inclined to give them great um, antiquity. The primary colors alone was used, said Ford, by the Greeks, the Egyptians, the Greeks, and the um, Arabs. So in the origin of the nation Islam, um, in the origin of nation Islam, um, the Farrakhan controversy part four by Sergeant Sam Smith, it says, Ford told his host tales of great African and Asian empires. So this is what he used to teach on. And this makes sense based on the Moorish literature. You go to the Moorish literature to Industrious Act of Muslims and you see the word from the name Ford um, in the second paragraph twice. It's even said within the supreme lessons of the, um, of the gods and earth um, or what is known as the um, English Sea Lessons 1 through 36 that um, when asked, you know, about I came to um, North America, um, I came to the wilderness of North America by myself. It says, he implies he came as a free man of his own free will. His first appearance in 1910 is said to have come in contact with Noble Drali, Moorish Temple of Science. His second coming, July 4th, 1930. No, it is said he proclaimed himself the reincarnation of Noble Drali. This is when um, he began to teach the knowledge of God here in North America. He set up his first temple in Detroit, where it is said he had as many as 8,000 followers between 1930 and 34. He disappeared in 1934. So thus, according to the lessons, David Ford L., or who is known as Master Fried, is said to have come in contact with Noble Drali in the first appearance in 1910. Even um, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad states um, that in 1910, Master Farah Muhammad appeared in the United States in New York. 
After the death of Prophet Muhammad Ali in 1929, Moore signed Temple of America um, annual national conference. David Ford is reported to have said he will bring America to his knees for the death of Muhammad Ali <clears throat> and the attacks on the Moorish Americans by the local police in 1928-29. And one, one month later, the um, stock market crashed, and many of the former Moors saw this man as a prophet and followed him to Detroit, where the nation of Islam was born. During his time, David Ford L. started referring to himself as the reincarnated prophet Nova Drali. And in the beginning stages of the movement, he was known as um, Prophet W.D. Ford, or Fraud. And Arnold Blash Muhammad stated in an interview with um, Buzz Anderson in 1971 that in 1930, Masrah Muhammad used the name W.D. Ford. Often signed it W.D. Um, Wallace D. Ford. Often signed W.D. Ford. And um, only Blast Muhammad said that he did not know what the D stood for. It was still for David. Some say Douglas. In the um, third year, 1933, he signed his name, W.F. Ford, which stood for Master Fraud Muhammad. And Elijah uh, Muhammad said that um, about his teaching in the book, Messenger to, um, to the Black Man, that a law came to us from the holy city of uh, um, Mecca, Arabia, in 1930. He used the name W.D. Ford often signing it W.D. Ford, and in the third year, 1933, he signed his name W.F. Ford, which stood for Wallace Ford, uh, Ford Muhammad. The FBI had photographic, the um, FBI had photographs and fingerprints of um, Wallace Dud Ford on file. And the FBI alleged that Ford used 58 aliases during his lifetime. He went by names such as David Ford L., Wally Farad, Farad Muhammad, W.D. Ford, um, F. Farad Muhammad. However, he is generally known within the nation of Islam as Master Farad Muhammad. All right. Now, there's even a, another post or picture that according to the Washington Post, um, dated April 19, 1997, issued We Are Not Afro-Americans, We Are the Washington, is a photo from the um, from Her Highness Empress Vidyasi Tierra Washington, Turnica Gaston L. Bay collection, in which that shows W.D. Ford, um, Timothy Drew, and Corella Drew all sent together as children. So hence Timothy Drew, later known as Holy Prophet Nova Drali, did know he did know Wallace D. Ford, later known as David Ford L. or Master Farah Muhammad, and hence the reason why he chose him to um be um the assistant um to him um during his time of need. Because obviously he did not know who to trust and this was the person in which that um he thought that he can trust the most. So it was based on the trust factor. In other words, when you're surrounded by um, snakes, you know which you don't know which one is going to bite. All right. So when people speak about, well, that's what happened in 1916 was them two getting at it. But if they knew each other as church, and then it would be seen as, um, you know. Um, a uh, family splat, um, um, spat. Now, there's another article from the Universal Truth, Volume 2, number three editor, Prince A. Cuba. Now, Prince Cuba is actually a five percenter, one of the old gods, and um, he shows that the May 26, 1933 uh, photo released by Detroit uh, Police Department identifies W.D. Ford. His authenticity has been disputed by Nation Islam officials since 1963, and has been included as an insert here for comparison with Detroit Free Press photo of, ni- of November 24, 1932. 
And it says that Farad was released December 6, 1932, after agreeing to leave the city. He was arrested May 25, 1933, when he was found again in Detroit. But these two pitches, um, even though it's been disputed by the Nation of Islam, actually are pictures of the same man. And this is why many within um, the Moral Science Temple of America states that the individual David Ford L. in the upper left hand um, and corner of the Moral Science Temple of America, October 15th through the 20th, 1928 convention, first annual convention, um, Prophet Nubu Jali is the founder, but it says that that is him uh, with the bow tie on and the fez on in the upper left hand corner. Right. As a matter of fact, according to the biography of Noble Dry Lee, Exhuming of a Nation by Long Pleasant Bay, um, it is him also in the upper left-hand corner is Farad Muhammad L. of Detroit, uh, a Michigan Temple Number 4, a.k.a. David Ford L. It is also confirmed in the Reparations Equal War, which will free and unite black people by Dr. Ali Muhammad, former member of the um, NOI and FOI of the Nation of Islam, states that Masra Muhammad under the alias of David Ford L is pitching in the upper left-hand corner. However, the above picture give you the dates, which is October 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th of 1928. However, according to sources, on January 20th, 1926, Farad was arrested for violating the Chicago Prohibitation Law, and a month later, on February 15th, 1926, for violations of State Poison Act, he was sentenced to six months to six years at San Quentin Penitentiary on June 12, 1926, for allegedly selling narcotics in his restaurant. Assumingly, he had served three years in San Quentin before um, gaining release on May 17, 1929. This is what it said, is that this is when he was released. Now, this is coming from Dr. Wesley Muhammad, uh, Master Farad Muhammad, who is he? And who is he not? Page 39. However, based on the above picture, and this may um, have happened several, at least seven months earlier, or maybe, you know, and it is just a case of lookalike. That's what some people say, just a case of lookalike. However, the FBI case number 56062 matches the fingerprints of the person known as W.F. Um, Muhammad and the Federal Bureau of Investigation under um, the United States Department of Justice um, had this in Chicago, Illinois, on February 9, 1943, and that Farad was arrested in Detroit Police Department on 52633 with the case number 45138, in which that um, it would appear to be um, the same man, and that the Moors are right and exact about that information, even though the nation and many of those might dispute it. However, the messenger's son, Wallace Wafdin Muhammad, who took over the nation of Islam in 1975, said in several speeches that he was in communication with the founder, saying, Master Muhammad is not dead, brothers and sisters. He is physically alive, and I talk to him whenever I get right. I don't talk to him in any spooky way. I go to the phone and dial his number. Why? Because this same Master Muhammad was living in um, Oakland, California, and working um, and um, and had a restaurant. Nevertheless, Wafi Muhammad claimed that Farad had returned to the United States under the name Mohammed Abdullah. And in 1976, Wafi um, Muhammad had appointed Master um, Professor Mohammed Abdullah as Imam of Mohammed Mosque 77. Now he was still known as Professor now, Mohammed Abdullah. Now, remember, that was the name in which that was used by Professor Drew, which is Drew Ali, as well as also by um, David Ford L. or slash Masra Muhammad as being um, a math, um, being a professor. But it just co- is no coincidence that he became the imam over uh, Muhammad's Ma 77 in Oakland, California, and that the November 26, 1976 um, issue of the um, NOI journal, Balalian News, reports that Master Abdullah's first kutbah at the mosque, and um, and it shows the picture of the Baladian news, and um, W.D. Uh, Muhammad did 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 not state that Master Abdullah was Farad until after Abdullah's death in 1992, and that Abdullah himself never publicly claimed to be Farad. 
And Muhammad Abdullah himself denies that he was Farad, saying, it is all right if I am Farad Muhammad for Wallace D. Muhammad. I taught him some lessons, but I am not the same person who taught Elijah Muhammad, and I am not God. However, in 1981, a Pakistani scholar, D.I. Um, Alizari, researched Farad's life and claimed that Farad was identical with Muhammad Abdullah, a Pakistani um, um, Armenia, um, um, Ahmad Dia, a Muslim who had been an advisor of um, Elijah Muhammad since the late 1950s and who was the tutor of his son and eventual successor, Wafi Muhammad. And in 1991, there was a report in the Orthodox newspaper that carries this story that Farad was alive and living in California and worshipped as a Orthodox Muslim. And W.D. Farad did not state um, that, um, um, like we said, um, that um, Muhammad Abdullah was fraud until after his death. You know, um, in 1933, I mean, excuse me, in 1993, Imam Wafi Muhammad publicly stated that he knew for a fact that fraud had returned to the United States. Okay? Um, matter of fact, in in Fedville, um, during the summer of 2006, my um, brother Michael Bertham, who was known as Michael um, L. Babasu of Connie Bay, videotaped brother Bilal Muhammad, who was in his early 70s at the time, and told us that he knew Master Farah Muhammad personally and that he worked with him in Faraz's um, restaurant in Oakland, California during the late 60s. And he was taught and trained by Master Farah Muhammad. This is what was said. This is what was on the videotape. This is what was told to us. Now, this dude is in his 70s. He don't have, you know, he don't got no reason to lie to us. We didn't ask him to. He just wanted to say he wanted to tell his story. But there's many books in which that um, you can go to. You can go to The Rise and the Fall of Elijah Muhammad by Carl Evans, The Messenger. The Rise and the Fall of Elijah Muhammad. You can go to the um, in Original Man, The Life and Times of Elijah Muhammad by Claude Andrew um, Cliggs the Third. You can go to these books and read them. Read them. And they say that Elijah Muhammad himself was also part of Prophet Abu Dhali's, as well as also the UNIA of Marcus Garvey. He was part of these organizations. He's also a black, he was also a mason and a shriner. Hell, he says that within his own book, The Secrets of Freemasonry, by Elijah Muhammad, Message of Allah. He says that he used to be a mason until he got into Islam. Islam has been practiced in said secrecy called higher masonry or shriner. That is a small degree of his knowledge of Islam taught to him in secrecy by the society. However, the real secret of Freemasonry is that there is no secret. It's about you, Hiram Abit, to some people, the Kushites, the children of the sun, or the children of the light, Freemasons, the real Freemasons. Everybody else is faking. Because you must be able to absorb light to be a Freemason and become a son or a daughter of light. It's just that simple. You get another book. It's called The More Circle 7, The Rise of Islamic Faith Among Blacks in America and Its Masonic Origins. It's written by um, Keith Moore, 32nd Degrees. As a matter of fact, there's a photo of the um, More Science Temple of America First Annual Convention, and you can actually see... Um, who more is um, who more? There's several, many more who say that that is, this is Elijah Muhammad who's in the back, um, almost parallel to Prophet Muhammad Ali who is in the front, and he is in the far back, and that is Elijah Muhammad. And um, even it was told to us by Hakeem H.Y. Bay that um, Elijah, his wife, Clara, Muhammad, as well as um, many other family members were part of the Detroit um, 
Temple, number four, up under um, Supreme Grand Governor James Lomax um, Bay. All right, so we're going to go to the line. Let's see who got some questions here because we've been going on here for quite some time. Let's go to area code 910. You're on the line, area code 910. Peace. Area code 910. All right, we're going to go to area code 314. Every code three one four, you on the line? Peace. Peace, God. I, I, how you doing, God? I'm doing great. Yes, sir. But I was uh, uh, very enlightened at the lecture you was given tonight uh, about uh, uh, the history of Noble Drew Ali and the uh, War Science Temple. I got a, I got a little more understanding also uh, about the War Science Temple Incorporated. Right. And the reason why is a War Science Temple Incorporated. Right. And then being under the 501c3, that explains a lot why they cannot, uh, why they, uh, or whatever, why they don't uh, teach the way they should teach. Right. Especially when it comes to nationality, law, and birthright. And That's uh, right. so, therefore, they're stagnant and they right. can never go anywhere. Yep. Instead of being under 508 uh, or a status, you know. So uh, I, I got a better understanding why. Uh, right. Another thing about uh, uh, Master for Art Muhammad. Uh, yeah, I I, uh, I know in the Nation of Islam. I know I was a member at one time. I was known as uh, Brother Robert Six X, and how I got my ex. You had to write the uh, the oh, letter. Right. Uh, yeah, you had to let it uh, perfectly. Right. And in order to get your ex. That's right. So I, I spent months trying to get that perfect that, get that letter to perfection, and I finally got it. And now you're just telling me that that this man is not who he said he was. And uh, I said, "Wow, that's kind of a pill to swallow," you know. Yes, well, sir. I mean, I mean, he was appointed by Prophet Obadrali as Assistant um, Supreme Grand Chairman to sit in his seat. You know, while he went through um, his trials and tribulations. You know, during the time of when Claude Green um, Bay was murdered, and okay. um, and before he got indicted for the murder, so he chose um, David Ford L, who was supposed to be Master Brown Muhammad, to sit in that particular chair. Okay, okay. So he must have been of of, of some kind of uh, uh, good repute, you know, oh, well, well, not not the uh, not the, not, the, not the use that word, but in good standings. Among right. the uh, uh, noble Drew Ali and the rest of the high officials in, in the uh, Moore Science Temple of, I mean, of science, it, right? Obviously, as far as he was concerned, um, he was um, he had more trust factor than anyone else at that time. Okay, okay, and uh, also I was uh, dealing with the fact that uh, C. Kirkman Bay, right. Now you said C. Kirkman Bay was right. One Charles of, Kirkman Bay was Charles really Kirkman Bay. He was one of the betrayers. Yes. Because yeah, see, I I used to always uh, 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 in presentation uh, in more science temples. The, they said that all honors go to Noble Drali and all praises go to C. Kirkman Bay and uh, R. F. Nelson Bay. Right. And R. Jones, I mean, these, these brothers, you know, right. so these brothers were uh, <laughs> infiltrators. Infiltrators. Okay, I got now. I got that. I got that straight. Also. Right, Masonic infiltrators. So I know I done right. right. And, I'm, and 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 I'm just talking about it in general. Not all of them per se. Some of them might have had good intentions. Okay. However, when you take um, an organization and you form it into your own, which is um, the more scientific of America. Of Prophet Noble Drali is not the more scientific of America incorporated by Charles Kirkman Bay. Mm. And now, um, majority of the temples are put up on the 501c3 status since the 1960s. Then, really, what you have done has you have you have basically stifled the civic movement of the organization because in the 501c3 you can't be political. 
Wow. Wow. That's why they object to a lot of things I was saying in that temple. Right. That, that explains it. Yeah. It sure does, you know, because uh, that's right. what, and I did right by the stop, stop going to them. I done um, right. As far as I'm concerned. Yes. <laughs> I done right. And then I stopped going to them and joined your, you know, the temple uh, uh, number two, North Carolina, which you was the grand sheep. Right. So you the one that had nationalized me and uh, the men in the Washington nation. So I know I made the right move. Yeah, and for anyone else who wants to know more about this information, you can join us um, via um, our classes every Monday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Send me a um, link for the classes. Um, you can um, send them to Healing, H E A L I N G, Healing Wing, W I N G S, online, O N L I N E, at yahoo.com. So, Healing Wings online at yahoo.com. Send me a, um, an email and I will link you into the classic for Monday and Thursdays um, in which that we teach this um, Moorish um, Divine National Movement information. The actual truth. No holding back. No lying to you. No spookism. No mysticism. Right. But telling you the truth about what took place and the esoteric teachings in which that is encoded inside of the Moorish Holy Quran Circle 7. Inside of the um, 101s. Right. But you have, you have to have the uh, computer for that, don't you? Yes, you have to have the computer. Oh, okay. For, um, link I have, one, classes. I have um, one pretty but phone. You can all, but you can also use the phone, too. And you just listen in. You, might, you won't be able to see the slide, slide please, um, presentation, um, which is on Microsoft PowerPoint, but you will be able to listen in on, onto the call like a conference call. So you can actually... If you have a computer and a phone, beautiful. If you just if you don't have a computer, then you can still listen on the phone. Right. Good. Very well. Good. I'm gonna start doing that then. All right. Well, I'm right. sure use some more of that instruction. Right. So when we're speaking about infiltrators, we're talking about um during that particular time period, um you had people who was egotistical and they was jacking for the position of Prophet Noble Drali. And they banded together against him in order to um, to get their ideologies to the forefront. And one of the ones in which that I um, showed you through the information who did that more so than anyone else was Charles Huckman Bay, who happened to have been um, um, a childhood friend of Prophet Noble Drali, a classmate of his, you know, but obviously they weren't as close as they used to be because Charles Huckman Bay went along with Claude Green Bay. Mm-hmm. You know, wow. with the um with the um with the up you know with the um taking over with the takeover. Now what is what is the phone number to that uh the, the Monday and Thursday classes? Um I might have to give it out. It's from any meeting. Um hold on, let me see here. I can pull it up. Just hold on a second. Okay. But um you can continue talking or ask me a question as I do so. Okay. Yes, uh, I, I, you know, I, I know I have made a mistake by joining one those temples, you know, because I know something was wrong when I first came to the temples. I heard a lot of singing, and it just wasn't none what one none. Uh, they they were saying anything about what what I, I heard or saw on the DVD tapes, right? Like um, uh, you of you, uh, Taj Tariq Bay. Hakeem Bay and Sister Myra L. Right. There was nothing like them. You know? Right. And that's what I was looking for. Well, that's the reason why. <coughs> because they pull up on the 501c3. So this status is compromised because they have to listen to the state policies as far as um, that their organization cannot be, quote unquote, political. They cannot um, put forth civics and law into the public. And that's. Uh. Deal with those particular affairs, because to do so would be a violation, and they would lose their tax exempt status. I got you. Then they would shut them down as well, wouldn't they? Right. Mm-hmm. We, on the other hand, um, the Moorish Holy Temple of Signs of the World goes back to 1916. So we specifically say no. We started, you know, we've been here since 1916. So therefore, we fall up under in the 508 um, 
um, her statues in which that was in um, in which that um, was in court, uh, recorded, you know, through the Holy Temple of Science, and then later on through the Moore Science Temple of America of 1926 and then 1928. Um, okay. You know, um, in which that um, we are still tax exempt, but we do not fall up under a 501c3 status. Right. We are an actual church or temple. So we right. do not have to listen to um, the particular laws based on um, not being political. Because we, okay. we do not have those restrictions. Okay. But the number is 218. Okay. Uh, two, the number is 218-339-2409. Okay. Mm-hmm. 2409. So 218-339-2409. 209. Mm-hmm. Okay, I and got the, it. And the code is the two. This is the guest, um, the guest access. Um, access code is two six six eight three five five. That's two six six eight three five five. Okay, I got you. All right. So come on into the classes for those that want to um, learn um, more information, um, not just from um, a temple perspective, just putting your hands up and read from the Moorish literature, the Moorish Holy Quran, or um, or the one on ones or whatever the case may be, but even going further in depth, um, breaking this information down from an esoteric slash adept chamber on perspective because since the death of Prophet Nubu Ali, there actually has been no adept chamber. It had to be resurrected and it came through by way of um the Great Seal National Association of Moorish Affairs. And this okay. is the school in which that Queen Valahara Bay comes out of. Um, this is the school that Hakeem H. Y. Bay come out of. This is the school in which that Taj Tyreek Bay come out of. This is also the school in which that I myself come out of. So um, if it was not for the Great Seal National Association of Moorish Affairs, this information you would not have in your hands today. Yes, sir. Than, you would not have um, all this Moorish information and this Moorish renaissance which has been going on for the last 15 years. It wouldn't be here. Yes, sir. What, what time did it start? Um, 8 p.m. Classes start every Monday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. 8 o'clock. So that will be 7 here. Eastern Standard Time, right. It'll be 7 for you. Okay, I've got you. All right, brother. We're getting ready to um, head off of here. And um, we thank you for checking us out and listening to us once again. Anytime, more. All right, more. We appreciate you. Peace and love, God. Peace and love. Love, true peace, freedom, and justice, brother. Peace and honor. All right, we're going to hit you up with the grave diggers, the 12 Jews. As long as you got mentally dead people who are living in the mental death, meaning they're living in the mental grave. Before we get to that mental grave, let's get to um, you being an ex-slave as well as also um, you taking this cruise, this United Washington cruise, in which that we um, are definitely promoting, and we want you to definitely check us out. Um, the cruise is going to be happening March 21st through 25th, and there's three options for you. You want the interior um, room, you want the ocean view, or you want the balcony. Um, you want to definitely um, give us a call at 252-257-3588. That's 252 252- Two five seven three five eight eight for more information, and uh, we'll lead you in the right direction to get on this cruise. And if you think this information in which that we drop or that been dropping on the radio station for the last year and a half is something you haven't seen nothing yet, because I will be doing a presentation and I'm going to kill this. I'm going to kill it. First world on the radio. Finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays.
in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Or System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.